All right, you guys, welcome back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. My name is Eddie Watson, and my goal is to give you guys the confidence to succeed in the ICU by making these complex critical care subjects easy to understand. I truly hope that I'm able to do just that, and if I am, I do invite you to subscribe to the channel down below. When you do, make sure you hit that bell icon and select all notifications so you never miss out when I release a new lesson. All right, real quick before we get started, I want to tell you guys about something that I'm actually very excited about. Uh, I'm actually going through the process right now to be approved as a continuing education provider. So soon I'm going to be able to offer contact hours for these educational videos. These hours are things that can count towards your annual nursing board, CE requirements, your CCRN renewal, or other things like that. And I have been working really hard on this and I'm excited to announce a new program that I'm going to be putting together called ICU Advantage Academy, where you're going to be able to watch almost all of my huge collection of critical care educational videos, all of them without ads, while also earning CE credit. Now, along with that, you're also going to get access to the audio-only versions of the lessons, as well as the lesson notes. So, the Academy is going to officially be launching on March 15th, but in the meantime, I am going to offer a huge 50% discount when you go and pre-order the Lifetime Access Membership. So follow the link down in the description, or you can just head on over to icuadvantage.com forward slash academy to get 50% off this awesome membership, and I really look forward to learning with you guys over there. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started talking about milrinone, also known by the train name Primacore. So just real quickly on the history and background, this one was originally synthesized actually in the 1980s by the Sterling Winthrop Research Center. Um, this was based out of the United Kingdom. Uh, it had initial FDA approval in 1987 uh, and then further FDA approval in 2004. That said, the FDA does give warning that it's not been shown to be safe or effective in longer treatment of patients with heart failure greater than 48 hours. So just something to keep in mind. So what milrinone is, is it's actually a phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitor, so PDE3. And it has inotropic and vasodilatory properties as a result, and that is going to be used for the short-term treatment of acute decompensated heart failure, uh, as well as some off-label use in pulmonary hypertension. All right, so let's talk about some of our therapeutic actions. So as an overview, so milrinone works by inhibiting an enzyme called, you guessed it, phosphodiesterase 3. So PDE3 is the enzyme that's actually responsible for breaking down uh, cyclic AMP or CAMP. And CAMP actually causes uh, increased activation of protein kinase A, and then PKA goes on to phosphorylate many elements of the contractile machinery inside of the heart. Now PDE3 is present in the cardiac sarcoplasmic reticulum, smooth muscles and arteries and veins. Now, at low doses, milrinone is actually selective for PDE3, while at higher doses, it is non-selective for our other phosphodiesterases. So now, specifically with this medication, let's talk about some of the cardiac effects. When I talked about that, that phosphorylation by PKA, what this actually does is this allows for an easier influx of calcium, and this is going to be needed for myocyte contraction, leading to really increased inotropy and chronotropy. It also allows for an influx of potassium for repolarization, as well as it also strengthens the bonds of the myosin and actin filaments that are used in the contraction. So all of this combines to produce positive inotropic effect, which increases the strength of cardiac contraction, as well as improved relaxation. And then this gives the patient an improved systolic and diastolic function and ultimately optimizes their cardiac output. Now, any increased heart rate here is actually going to be much less with milrinone than we see with our traditional catecholamine, so something to keep in mind. Now, from there, let's talk about our vascular effects. And so PDE3 usually prevents CAMP metabolism. PDE5, which is acted on by other inhibitory drugs such as sildenafil, usually prevents cyclic GMP. Now, both of these can cross over and prevent metabolism of either one. PDE3 and PDE5 are actually both present in vascular smooth muscle, and so by metabolizing cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP, uh, they help to increase vascular tone. By inhibiting PDE3, we prevent the metabolism of primarily cyclic AMP, but also some cyclic GMP, which in turn produces vasodilation. 
and the vasodilation takes place in arteries and veins, as well as within the pulmonary vasculature, helping to reduce PA pressures, as well as systemic blood pressure. Now, the vasodilatory effects of melranone are stronger than our beta-2 agonists, such as dibutamine and isoproteranol. All right, so let's talk indications for melranone. Now, really, its main indication is for the short-term treatment of acutely decompensated heart failure. That said, we do have off-label use in pulmonary hypertension, aiding in cardiac bypass and transplantation when the need for cardiac support is there, uh, as well as outpatient support of patients who have severe CHF symptoms, with the goal being some comfort destination therapy. All right, so now let's talk contraindications. So the only absolute contraindication is for its use in patients who have a hypersensitivity to it. Now, there is a relative contraindication in patients that have severe pulmonary arterial hypertension, as vasodilation of pulmonary vasculature may actually worsen that VQ mismatch, leading to worsened hypoxemia. Now, we do want to take caution because the drug is associated with increased frequency of ventricular tachycardia, including non-sustained VTAC and supraventricular or ventricular arrhythmias. This doesn't actually appear to be dose-dependent, so it's either something that's going to happen or not, uh, regardless of the dose that you're, you're going with it. We do also want to take caution as the drug may increase the risk of atrial arrhythmias, such as AFib, uh, especially following cardiac surgery. Additional caution as the drug may increase the ventricular rate in patients who have either AFib or flutter. And then finally, we want to be cautious because due to the increased vasodilation combined with decreased preload, as well as the potential decreased cardiac output as a result of that, that the patient may exhibit headache, syncope, and hypotension. And this effect is something that is correlated with dose, so potentially a greater effect with the higher dose that you have. All right, so let's talk adverse effects, uh, and really we just have uh, primarily for the CNS uh, headache, and then for the cardiovascular system, we kind of already talked about atrial arrhythmias, ventricular arrhythmias. This includes both VTAC, non-sustained VTAC, uh, as well as ventricular ectopy, um, hypotension, and chest pain. All right, so the common concentrations that we're going to see this there's really two ways that we can give this, either uh, injection or continuous infusion, and then as an off-label usage, uh, giving this inhaled via a nebulizer. So for a continuous infusion, um, we have various vial sizes that are available, um, but they all should ultimately be diluted with either half normal saline, normal saline, or D5 water, with the goal of providing a final concentration of 200 micrograms per ml. Now, commercially available, we do have bags that uh, you'll see that are 20 milligrams and 100 mLs of D5W or 40 milligrams and 200 mLs of D5W. Again, both of these are at that 200 microgram per mL concentration. Now, when we're giving this medication inhaled via nebulizer, then here we want to use a 1 milligram per mL concentration. So for our common dosing, um, when we're giving this medication IV, we're typically going to start with a loading dose of 25 to 50 micrograms per kilogram, and we want to push this slowly over 10 minutes. Then we start our continuous infusion, and our rate is anywhere from 0.125 to 0.75 micrograms per kilogram per minute. And then we obviously want to titrate this based on our patient's hemodynamic response. And typically when we're titrating, we're going to be titrating it by 0.125 micrograms per kilogram per minute. And here we're looking to have either a desired cardiac index, ideally, uh, or sometimes we could also be going off of the systolic blood pressure for a goal. Now, for giving this medication inhaled, again, this is for that treatment of pulmonary arterial hypertension, that the dose here is typically 2.5 to 5 milligrams, uh, and we can give it every six hours via nebulizer, or sometimes it's also used as a continuous infusion uh, nebulizer, and this is at a 1 milligram per ml concentration. All right, so quickly for our pharmacokinetics. So when we're given this medication IV, it has an onset of five to 15 minutes. We're not real sure the, the peak, but it has a duration of three to six hours and a half-life of two to two and a half hours. It is metabolized by the liver and excreted in the urine, and there is no antidote for this. And then for our nursing considerations, first, typically patients are going to require ICU monitoring with this medication. That said, patients who are going to be going home on set rates of milrinone may actually transfer out of the ICU into uh, non-ICU cardiac units. 
The patient may require right heart catheterization prior to the initiation of therapy, uh, as well as we may use the PA catheter for ongoing monitoring. Um, you want to make sure that you are monitoring the, their cardiac rhythm during the infusion, and then monitor the patient for changes in either atrial or ventricular rhythms and patterns, uh, as this may require stopping the medication. Um, improved cardiac output may actually increase urine output, thus uh, if the patient is on any diuretics, that, that dosage may need to be reduced when the heart failure is improved. Potassium loss is a possibility, and this may cause digoxin toxicity. And then make sure that you are monitoring fluid and electrolyte status, blood pressure, heart rate, and renal function. Um, excessive decrease in blood pressure may require slowing or stopping the infusion. And then you do want to correct any hypoxemia uh, as well as any electrolyte imbalances uh, before you begin the use as well as during therapy. Um, and it may need to be renally dosed in patients with either acute or chronic kidney issues. And then finally, just some lab studies to be aware of um, that we may see potentially abnormalities in LFTs, uh, as well as it can cause changes in our electrolyte levels, uh, most notably with uh, potentially the loss of potassium. All right, so that sums up our lesson on milrinone. Hopefully you guys found some good information in this lesson here. So I hope that you guys found this information useful. If you did, please leave me a like on the video down below. Uh, it really helps YouTube know to show this video to other people out there, as well as leave me a comment down below. I love reading the comments that you guys leave, and I try to respond to as many people as I can. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And a special shout out to the awesome YouTube and Patreon members out there. The support that you're willing to show me and this channel is truly appreciated, so thank you guys so very much. If you'd be interested in showing additional support for this channel, you can find links to both the YouTube and Patreon membership down below. Head on over there and check out some of the perks that you guys get for doing just that. As well as check out some of the links to other nursing gear, as well as some awesome t-shirt designs I have down there as well. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next lesson that I release. Otherwise, in the meantime, here's a couple awesome lessons I'm going to link to right here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.